Ego is your greatest enemy, I think. And it is the one that really hinders all the wealth and beauty of your life. So if you could just see this ego, how it works, just you'll be enjoying it. It's a drama it plays, all right? Let's have it. You can see the drama and then suddenly you will be amazed that you are not in it, you are watching it. When you are detached from your ego, you can see how it tries to entice you. And if you see around today, in these modern times, everybody is quite <laughs> conscious of their ego, very conscious. And the way they are coming up in the newspapers or the way they are in some magazines, I'm quite amazed. I would feel shy to be there because it's so much of expression of your ego, nothing else. All kinds of things they start, they have competition of ego, there are lots of competition. Like they have a beauty competition, then they have another competition for Mr. Uh, you can say India, Mr. this thing, that. All these things actually give the person ego and others also run after such competitions. They think, why am I not? I should be like that. So it's very deadening and absolutely blinds your mind that you think this is the way one has to be very successful. This success lasts for how long? It perishes in no time. But success in Sahaja Yoga is what will last forever and everybody will remember it. The one who has this kind of a humble nature will be remembered for generations. I have never seen a statue of a person who has been egoistical. On the contrary, if there was some, they used to criticize, he was a very egoistical man. And nowadays it's impossible. Anybody who has ego, I don't think anybody is going to sing any songs about such a person or going to raise any statues in their name. We should not react. We should not react. If you see something wrong, all right, you meditate on that. You meditate. If you find anything wrong happening, all right, Meditate on that. If somebody is unkind to you, at that moment do not react. Afterwards, when that person is quietened, you tell him or tell her. Because at that time when he's so volatile or she's volatile, if you tell, nothing will happen. Gradually, I don't say always you can win over such people, but gradually you may be able to make them understand that it's wrong. It's wrong to do things which they have been doing. Today I was thinking of telling you about the ego problem because I think everybody feels that that's the biggest problem they all have and there's a big ego trip uh, one gets into and they don't know what to do with it. So first part, I will tell you how the ego rises and how, what it does to us. The second, how to understand it, how to tackle the position of ego and put it in its own aspect. <clears throat> As you see in the map here, the yellow stuff that you see on top, is the ego. The balloon that is yellow is the ego. 
You see, down below, it starts from the Sadhishthana. This is the color of the bile within us. And this Swadhisthana Chakra, which is for our creativity, is directly connected to that ego there. And when it starts rotating round the void and going to the various parts of the void, it collects all the problems of the void. Void is that green uh, circle within us, where physically we have, in the void, we have uterus, we have kidney, it's a complete viscera, all the intestines, Ascending, transverse, descending colon. Liver is the, is the upper part of liver more. Then also pancreas and the spleen. So all the problems of these organs are collected by this chakra which moves. It comes out of the Nabi chakra and moves round and round and round and collects all the problems. It nourishes, gives power, the vital power to these organs and also it generates necessary power for our creative action. It also collects the fat cells of the void, convert it into the proper cells for the brain, for its use, for the grey matter. All this work it has to do, one chakra. It manifests aortic plexus outside, on the physical level, we call it as an aortic plexus and it has got six subplexuses which look after all these organs. This is meant for our action. When we go into action, this chakra starts working. By the first power, which is on the left hand side, we desire. But by the second one, we go into action and it's called as Kriya Shakti. Now when this action starts within us, it produces the byproducts, or we can say all the problems of these organs, which are to be deposited somewhere, and they are all deposited in the brain as ego. All the problems that we have out of these, this creativity, and the action of all these organs are to be counterbalanced. And as a counterbalance, the ego develops. For example, now I have to come to meet you all here. I had to get out of the house, I had to change, I had to drive, whatever it is. Then I came, I had to put in effort. I had to plan out how I'm going to talk to you, that I don't do normally, but I'm saying generally people do it. And I put in the effort to come in. Now how am I to justify this, all this effort? What is the satisfaction that one gets out of doing this effort, this kriya, this action? We go on doing some action 
And why should we do it? After all, action means, any activity means exertion, botheration, problems. The best is to sit at home and do nothing of the kind. But we do not do that. We take up challenges, we rush up to it. All this we do with our Kriya Shakti, with our right action. Because we do action, we have to have a satisfaction about it. As a reaction to that, ego develops. If we do not have the ego, we would not do anything. It's a fact. But ego is the one that rationalizes all our madness, the rat race we are running into. If we did not have the ego, we would not go into this nonsense. The more we try to rationalize our activities, the more ego develops to satisfy. All right, very good, very good. Now you are a successful man, see? You are a very successful man, you have got this, you have got that. Lots of misunderstandings creep in when we pamper our ego like this. Or I should say that when we are satisfied with our ego, that we really get lost. We get identified with our ego and not with ourselves. So if you do some work very well, supposing you have, say, made a beautiful poetry, or say, not a po piece of poetry, but say, you have made a very good painting, then you would like people to appreciate. If they do not appreciate you, you think you have done nothing, though you have done a beautiful poem uh, of a canvas. But still you will be so dissatisfied with yourself, unless and until people appreciate you, they must garland you, they must say, oh, you are great, you are really unique, you are a genius. You know many artists who created great art got trapped into this kind of misidentification. When they created some great art, the art could not give them satisfaction. They had to go to ego, and Mr. Ego would not be satisfied unless and until everybody says, yes, yes, you are very good, you have done this, you are a genius, you are this, you are that. That's how the ego develops then within us. But a situation can arise where even when we have done nothing, we want to take the credit. Then we call such a person egoistical, who says, I will do this, I have done this, I, 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 then we call him an egoistical person. Because he gives words to his ego, that's why we call him egoistical. But all of us have got this Mr. Ego there sitting on our heads. When it starts bloating, the more successful you are, the worse it is. The more you indulge into planning and thinking, the worse it is. The balloon goes on, you see, pumped, as if you are pumping a balloon, you see. The more you pump, the more it becomes. And you can never realize that you are not that ego. Then you start feeling very nice about it. Because everybody says, oh, what a great man he is. The whole society develops on those lines. Now, how to overcome this ego? Because people start seeing gradually this. It happens. They start seeing Mr. Ego, oh, very great. He's just coming up, giving me ideas, all right. You feel sometimes very depressed with the idea that this is Mr. Ego I was identified with. All right, you see your ego. Then when you see your ego, then what do you do with it? Or if somebody says, better watch your ego, then what happens? You start fighting it. You say, no, I will not say anything, I'll just keep quiet. Let them say anything, whatever they like. Then you become another type. 
you become a person who is suffering from superego. So you are left with desires but do not act. When you say that, let others aggress me, I am not going to aggress anyone, I will be very careful about not aggression. But by this kind of a thing, what happens? That when you raise the left side, I mean left side which goes up and the right hand side, superego, it presses the ego down but again is bounced back and there is a kind of a bouncing going on. By this behavior, when you fight your ego, the ego sits on your head much more. The more you try to fight ego, it sits on your head. You are not to fight it. Supposing you take a balloon and start hitting it, it will hit you back further. Go on hitting it, it will go on hitting. Now which is the way to deflate this ego? How do we deflate a balloon in the same manner? Take a pin and give it a prick. You just look at yourself, say, all right, Mr. So and so, now how do you do? And you laugh at yourself, you said, oh, you were very unhappy, you see, when you saw that you were, you were not praised very much, all right, now have a pin from me. And that's how you deflate it, by seeing it, by all the time making fun of it yourself and piercing a pin into it. Not by deflating, in the way people say that you deflate the whole thing by pushing it down or by killing it, but actually just making a hole in it. In the same way, if you start me looking at yourself and make fun, human beings only know very well how to make fun of themselves. No animals know that. If you learn how to make fun of yourself, your ego will go down. So. We have only one choice left, is to be in the center, to watch your ego and superego. For all the Sahaja Yogis who are realized have to watch themselves, not others. You should not expect anything of others, just expect something of yourself for a change. With ego you do that, expect something of the others. In superego you do for others, but in Self-realization you emit yourself as joy, love and beauty. So if there is any reaction, or if the Kundalini doesn't rise, there's nothing to feel bad or argue about it. By argument, we think I could do, I would take you to courts and argue their things. But by argument, I cannot do it. You see, it has to happen in you. I'm anxious that it should happen. In the same way, you should be also anxious that it should happen to you. There cannot be argument about it, you see. It's a happening. How can you argue about the sp sprouting of a seed? If it does not, you cannot argue with it. You see, it has to sprout. It's as simple as that. If it is not sprouting, there's something wrong, all right? So both the things, our ego and conditionings, are all the time acting outside. This reaction which is built in within us is just like bubbles in the ocean. And these bubbles keep us away from reality. These bubbles are of thought and they just blast you all the time in your head and you don't know why they are there. When you depend on this artificial mind of yours, then you have no discretion 
as to understand what is good and what is bad. This mind is the one where all kinds of evil things start. All kinds of quarrels, fights and uh, possessiveness, lastly the war also comes there. It is in this mind only which is nothing but a myth. All these concrete, destructive ideas somehow or other come up and then they start growing and growing. Naturally action has a reaction. This reaction itself is a wrong idea and this reaction should be just dissolved into the feeling of pure love, the ocean of compassion. So with the great feeling of love and compassion we can do it, we all can do it and can work it out. It's the love, you are working for love. Such an ocean of love is within you. How can you do without? And this has to work out at every level, whether it is your family, whether it is your city, whether it is your country, all the or the whole world. So the another thing is that when you are in that state of spirituality, then you are joy-giving, you are peace-giving, you are compassionate and you love it. All these problems of the ego just disappear.